Now at 11 on Time Warner Cable News on ABC 45, Heroes of War, a small, brave group, is reunited and honored in Greensboro tonight. Plus, containing a deadly disease, the Army says it's sending soldiers from a North Carolina base to help fight the Ebola virus. And the increase in overdose death, the new kits a nonprofit is using to reverse that trend in the triad and how it can extend a life in jeopardy. And thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Sharon Stone. Those stories are coming right up, but first here at 11. Meteorologist Doug Lindsay is here with the first check of that weather on the ones forecast. And Doug, at 6, we're talking about possible concerns about the rain impacting big night of Friday night football. Yeah, and, you know, it turned out to be not too big of a deal, really. Just a few minutes. All right, see you then. Thank you, Doug. A small group of World War II veterans and POWs are meeting this weekend in Greensboro. They survived the Bataan Death March after the fall of the Philippines and years in Japanese prison camps. Bob Costner was on hand for a ceremony honoring them. Johnson became a mechanical engineer after the war and returned to New Orleans. He has five sons and five grandchildren. A fire at the Flight 93 National Memorial in Shanksville, Pennsylvania, badly burned three administrative buildings today. The flames did not affect the memorial or construction of the visitor center. They're about two miles away from the site. Sandy Bradshaw from Randolph County was a flight attendant on United Flight 93. That plane crashed into the Pennsylvania field when passengers and crew attempted to regain control of the jetliner from terrorists. Her name is one of 40 names engraved at the site. U.S. government officials say they are ramping up their efforts to fight the Ebola epidemic. A private company has completed the first phase of cleaning up the Dallas apartment where Ebola patient Thomas Eric Duncan stayed. His family members were in quarantine there. Sylvia Burnwell with the Department of Health and Human Services says officials are doing what is necessary to prevent the dangerous disease from spreading. We've taken a number of precautions to prevent the spread. We've instituted exit screening procedures in West Africa to prevent those who have been exposed to Ebola or are sick with Ebola from traveling. The CDC says Ebola can be spread through contact with bodily fluids from an infected person. Doctors are working around the clock to develop a test vaccine to prevent Ebola. About 120 Fort Bragg soldiers are deploying to Africa. They're helping the Department of Defense contain the virus. According to the Army, about 1,400 soldiers nationwide will deploy to Liberia in mid to late October. From Bragg, the soldiers are part of the 86th Combat Support Hospital 44th Medical Brigade and a company from the 16th Military Police Brigade. The soldiers will provide medical support and site security. This deployment will bring the total number of Army soldiers on the ground to 3,200. A triad nonprofit is now distributing life-saving kits for opioid-related overdoses. Alcohol and Drug Services of Guilford will have kits at their High Point facility for people at risk or their family members. Uh, Brittany Edney shows us how the organization is working to save lives and get more users into treatment. The overdose reversal kits are available for pickup at the ADS office in High Point. Federal environmental officials spurred North Carolina regulators to reverse, reverse course on a policy. It allowed Duke Energy to drain massive amounts of polluted wastewater from its coal ash dumps directly into the state's rivers and lakes. The Southern Environmental Law Center released documents today. They show that the NC Department of Environment and Natural Resources quietly gave Duke approval in August to start emptying all of its coal ash dumps. The U.S. Environmental Protection Agency now says it is concerned that Duke's draining could violate federal water quality standards without requiring sufficient testing for toxic materials. A chicken processing plant in Siler City that closed its doors in 2011 could reopen early next year. Moore County-based Carolina Premium Foods is purchasing the former Townsend plant. They expect to take possession in December. We're looking at uh, being able to hit 200 employees here at this location by next summer. And then from there, scaling up as needed to roughly 700 employees at this location. Thompson anticipates half of the new hires will come from workers laid off when the plant closed. Carolina Premium will process antibiotic-free, non-GMO chicken, some of which could be supplied by former Townsend growers. Coming up here at 11 o'clock, Friday Night Football at one Wake County school started off with a moment of silence. That's in our Carolina Minute, the first.
I'm meteorologist Doug Lindsay clearing skies as we head into the overnight hour. Doug, I don't want to jump too far ahead here, but you touched on the coldest air of the season, and I really can't believe what's heading our way. Yeah, it's, you know, it's amazing how things developing on Friday. That is your weather on the ones forecast. Sharon, back to you. Thank you, Doug. Your sports is coming up. First place in the 3A State Conference on the line tonight. J.B. Ricks is here with those highlights. And the Dixie Classic Fair is back in town. So did the weather affect opening night? You're watching Time Warner Cable News on ABC 45. Thousands come out year after year for the Dixie Classic Fair. It is the second largest fair in the state. And opening night was no different. Many people came to the Winston-Salem Fairgrounds to enjoy their fair favorites. Katie Husband tells us what those favorites are. It was. And the fair runs through October 12th. The wide open bluegrass festival is jamming out in downtown Raleigh. This two day event features the musical stylings of bluegrass musicians from all over the country. This is free and it is open to the public. Although some events like bluegrass after hours, it's a late night show, do require ticket purchases. Musicians urge everyone to come out for some toe tapping fun. Kind of ignites you inside, I guess, to, to be able to, to pick and play and sing. It's so. hard to listen to this kind of music, keep your feet still. Yeah. The festival will run through 2 a.m. Sunday morning. Meanwhile, the North Carolina Seafood Festival is in full swing on the downtown Moorhead City waterfront. There are more than 200 vendors and, of course, plenty of seafood. This festival will also host live music. Organizers say they expect a large turnout that will help them push the importance of buying North Carolina seafood. In North Carolina, 80% of the seafood consumed is imported. All right, so it's hugely important that we get as much of our local product to market. So the Seafood Festival does a couple things. We have 200,000 people come and we tell them about the value of local seafood. We also fund projects that help distribution from our coast inland uh, with large retailers on local seafood. The festival runs through Sunday evening. And the 35th annual Riverfest kicked off this afternoon with a fall garden party at Greenfield Lake. This event is expected to draw nearly 200,000 people to the riverfront this weekend. 